We've looked at describing scatter plots using language like shape, strength, trend. Now what we want to do is that we want to use equations, so an actual equation to model linear regression. So what we want to do is that we want to look at this scatter plot above that's between shear strength and the age of the propellant. Remember the propellant is like saying glue. So how well does this glue work as it ages? So notice that we can draw this line following our data trend. So how cool would it be if we found an equation or a line so that we can predict the shear strength of a propellant that's 20 years old? So notice if we look at this, we actually don't have any data for a propellant that's 20 weeks old. But if we use a line, we could predict that. So notice if we follow up from 20 to the line and then over, we can kind of guesstimate that the shear strength of a propellant that's 20 weeks old is going to be somewhere around the 1900 range. By the way, the answer to how cool would it be if we could use an equation to do that? Answer, super cool. So the equation for a line, as you may remember, is y equals mx plus b. Now, just to review, m is the slope or the rate of change. So what that means is that it's going to tell us the change in y over the change in x. Another way to phrase that using language is that for every one increase in x, y changes by m. Now b is going to tell us the y-intercept. This always occurs when x equals 0. So another way of saying that is when x equals 0, y equals y-intercept. This is going to be really important when we start looking at some real-world examples and trying to talk about the slope and the y-intercept using context. x is typically called our independent variable. That's usually our treatment. And y is a dependent variable. That's usually the response. So for example, if we were looking at the weight of a vehicle, that would be our treatment. So we would change the weight of the vehicle. And y would be the dependent variable, which would be, say, the miles per gallon. That's going to be a response to adding weight to a vehicle. Now, a regression line is going to be a straight line equation that we base off of known data that can help us predict unknown data. So just like in the last example, we didn't actually have a repellent that was exactly 20 weeks old, but we can make a prediction. So, in math, you know that y equals mx plus b, but for some reason in statistics, and it's not my fault, please don't yell at me, they say a is the y-intercept and b is the slope. So I use some stat software, and I had that stat software find a linear regression equation for me, and that software told me that the shear strength is equal to 2627.9 minus 37.16 times the age of the propellant. Now that's a lot of words for a math equation, so it's easier to say y equals 2627.9 minus 37.16 times x. So remember, the age of propellant, that's independent. That's not something that we can change. However, that is going to affect the shear strength. So age of the propellant is independent. Shear strength is dependent on that age. So using that equation, we should be able to get a rough estimation of the shear strength when the age of the propellant is 20. So let's try plugging it in and see what we get. So we're going to have y equals 2627.9 minus 37.16 times 20. Remember your order of operations, you need to multiply that by 20 before you subtract it from the 2627.9. So if you did the math correctly, you should get that y equals 1884.7. Remember, this question asks us to write a full sentence interpretation of your solution. So, when the age of the propellant is 20 weeks old, we expect the shear strength to be 1884.7. Now, does that seem to fit in the scatter plot data above? So, if we scroll back up, yes, if we look at that line, which seems to fit our data fairly well, if we look at the line and we track from 20 over to the y axis, yeah, it looks like we guessed it. We guessed it. We guessed about 1900, so yeah, 1884 seems very reasonable. Now, how do we find the regression line? Well, we're almost always going to use technology to find the regression line. This isn't hard to believe um, because the, val or the um, calculations to finding the correlation coefficient are absolute murder.
However, it's still good to know where these numbers come from because it's going to affect how the line is built and how we can use it to estimate values. So here is how we come up with the regression line. We're going to need these five key numbers. So the five key numbers that we're going to need is we're going to need the standard deviation for a y variable, the standard deviation for x variable. Remember, they're both numerical variables, so we should definitely be able to find these the mean of both our x and our y, and we're going to need the correlation coefficient. All right, once we have all those, what we need to do is that we need to find our slope first. So our slope is going to be r, the correlation coefficient, because remember, that tells us how strong the relationship between the two are. And we're going to have to take the standard deviation of y divided by the standard deviation of x and multiply that by r. So find B first. After that, to find A, you're going to take the average of Y minus your slope times the average of X. So one more time, B equals R times SY divided by SX. A equals the average of Y minus B times the average of X. Note, first we have to find B before we find A. After that, we're going to end with y equals a plus bx. Remember, we're looking for an equation, not just a number. So we're going to continue with our shear strength and age of propellant, which, by the way, we already have the equation for. And we're going to try to find it by hand using these summary statistics. So we have s of y equals 298.6, s of x equals 7.63, x bar equals 13.36, and y bar equals 2131.4. And our correlation coefficient is negative 0.95. Now, i just like to point out really quick, negative 0.95 for our value tells us that we're going to have a negative strength. That means that we should end up with a negative slope because, remember, it's going to be decreasing or going down. So let's use this information, and let's find B, and then let's find A. So first off, B is going to equal negative... 0.95 times SY over SX. All right, I'm just going to round to do des two decimal places, and I get that B equals negative 37.18. And now I'm going to use that to find A. So A is going to equal Y bar minus B times X bar. So I have A equals 2131.4 minus negative 37.18 times 13.36. Remember, we're subtracting a negative, so that's actually, end up, that's actually going to end up being positive. So we're going to have 2628.13 for A value, which if we look at the previous example, those are really close. So our equation is going to be Y equals 2628.13 minus 37.18X. Now what we want to do is that we want to give a verbal interpretation of the slope and the y-intercept using the context. So here's what we are going to say. First, for the slope, let's identify what the numerical value of the slope is. So remember, the slope is always that number that's connected directly to the x. So in our case, it's going to be negative 37.18. But that doesn't really give too much information about the context. However, if you scroll back up to where I define the slope, I said that you could define the slope as a change in y over the change in x, or by saying for every one increase in x, y changes by our slope. So let's use that here. So remember, x is measured in weeks. So for every one week, the propellant ages, because remember, it's for every one increase in the x, our shear strength is going to decrease because we have a negative slope. Our shear strength is going to decrease by 37.18. So remember, the propellant was our x variable. So for every one change in our x variable, our y variable is going to change by that slope amount. Now, for the y-intercept, that's that number that stands alone, and it's going to occur when x equals 0. So our slope is 2628.13. So in context, when our propellant is 0 weeks old, because remember, that's our x variable, our shear strength will be 2628.13. So that means that when the propellant is brand new, our shear strength is going to be 2628.13.
Now, something quick to note is that because the line and base is based on the mean and the standard deviation, that means that our line is going to be centered at those variables. So it's going to be centered right at the average because that's the one thing that we really use to define this equation. So the further we get away from the center of the line, aka the further we get from our mean, the less accurate our predictions are going to be. Now the last topic is measuring the goodness of fit. So we know how to get this equation, but how good is that fit on the equation? So here's how we measure it, is we're going to measure it using the coefficient of determination, which just sounds so cool. So here's the coolest thing in math ever. I just think this is brilliant. So our, correlati our correlation coefficient is called R to get the coefficient of determination, which tells you just how good your linear model is, we're going to take r and we're going to square it. So the coefficient of determination is going to be between 0 and 1 since it's r squared. It can't be greater than 1, can't be less than 0, because if you square a negative, you get a positive. Okay? And it's going to tell us the strength of the linear association between x and y. Not only that, but it's going to tell us the percentage of our data that is really close to the line of best fit. So for example, if r was 0.922 and r squared was 0.85, that means that 85% of the variation in y can be explained by the linear relationship between x and y. Now, really quick, if our r squared is low, does that mean that we can't say that the variable x and the variable y have a relationship? explain. Well, be careful. It just means that we can't say that they have a linear relationship. So we can say that they have a linear relationship, but we could possibly still say that they have a strong nonlinear relationship. So remember, we can't just completely rely on our r and r squared. We still need to look at that scatter plot. So for the next example, we have somebody's weight that we're trying to explain by their height, and that has an r value of 0.7168. In the scatter plot next to that, we have somebody's weight trying to be explained by their waist in inches, which has an R value of 0 0.9038. What we want to do is that we want to find the R squared value for both and write a verbal interpretation of what each means. So if we look at the first one where weight is trying to be explained by height, it's got an R squared of 0.5282. So again, the math isn't really what we're after. We're more after that verbal interpretation. It means that 52.82% of a person's weight can be explained by their height. This means roughly 52.82% of weights can be described by the linear relationship between weight and height. That is that 52.82% of our data is close to the line. So that means if you went up to somebody and you tried to guess their weight, well, 52.82% of the time, you'd be pretty close, but not that close r squared on the next scatter plot, which is trying to explain somebody's weight using their waist measurement, is better. So we have 81.69% there. So that means that 81.69% of those weight variables are really close to that line, which means that it describes a good deal of that relationship. 